Okay, the next question that we got on the menu today is if you have 10.8 meters per second, I'm going to assume it means if you have 10.8 meters per second, how do you convert that to radians per second? Okay, another assumption we need to make is assume circular motion. Because if I'm traveling 10.8 meters per second in a straight line, what's how would you get radians per second? How would you get the angular velocity? Well, you can't. I'm not even moving in a circle. Um, you need circular paths um, for angular velocity. Okay? So, um, a nice equation that you can use is um, assume circular motion. And we also assume that... Um, Assume 10.8 meters per second is um, tangential speed. Tangential speed in circle. So uh, suppose if we draw a circle out like this, and maybe if this is like a real life situation, this is like a roundabout and you know, you got your little car here and you're driving. Um, like, you'd be driving in a circular path, but, like, if you're in a car, your speedometer would always say 10.8. And it's the tangential speed in this circle, and we got to assume that the speed is constant. Assume constant speed. Not sped. Spelling is clearly not my strong suit, but, you know, we don't need to spell. Uh, that's why I like math, because we only need to write one letter at a time. <laughs> okay, so uh, the equation that we like to use here to relate relationship between angular and tangential velocity is this r omega equals v this is the radius this is angular velocity it's not a w it's omega that is very important if you call that a w you take the l that's not a w that's omega this is the angular velocity And this is linear velocity, or tangential speed. Tangential velocity. Okay, so um, if we want to uh, convert this uh, to angular velocity, because angular velocity, this is in radians per second. Uh, well, we would just do omega equals linear velocity, whoops, divided by radius. Now we got um, 10.8 meters, meters per second, and radius, well, they didn't tell us. So um, we would need to have, we would need to be given a radius value um, to be able to solve for angular velocity, or if we wanted to, we could, um, we could also solve for radius given our angular velocities, we would just have um, tangential divided by angular this would be our radius if we wanted to solve that but um, yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be impossible to solve this question because we need two of the three components here radius uh, radius angular velocity tangential velocity we need two of those three to be able to solve for the other if we're only given one well you know we're gonna somehow need to get that other information somehow but um, given that the question is only one sentence long Unfortunately, um, our, the best answer that we can have is that it's radius dependent. Okay, so, uh, yeah. The above solution is good consid considering the fact that the... Um, Question is a little 
incomplete. Okay, cool. Okay, um, now unfortunately I am like, oh geez, I'm on my time limit. So I will have to uh, wrap this up. Uh, let me change over to my uh, camera real fast. Okay, so um, unfortunately, those are all the time. All those are all the questions that we have time for today. If you enjoyed today's Q and A and would like to be notified of when we do this next, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell below. If you're interested in submitting your own questions, we have links in the description where you can find the proper resources to do that. Remember to leave a like and a comment, and if you really like the video, share it with your friends. This has been Milne with One Class, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care, have a great day, and don't forget, physics is always a fun time. Anyone says that physics isn't fun? Nonsense, they're lying. Don't listen to them. Have a great day. Physics, fun. Thank <laughs> you.